In this class, we are going to learn how to insert a new record in our editable table. Here in our case, we are considering the editable table that is based on array data provider. Suppose if I click on the add button over here, I want a new record or the row to be added with the empty or the blank details. And the user should be allowed to enter the details like whatever is their requirement is and enter the details and click on save. When the user clicks on save, the details will be stored back to the source application. In our case, it is the business object. So this is the use case for today's class. So let's see how to do the same step by step in our Visual Builder application. So we are considering our application where we have left in our previous class that is calculating the salary range. Now what I will do is I will first of all drop a button, drag and drop it over here so that I can click on that and insert the new record into our table. I will name this as add. Done. Just tab out. Now on click of the button, I want a new record to be inserted into my editable table. In order to achieve that, I have to create the event. Click on this event. Click on OJ action. Here I will name this as add button event. When the user clicks on add, it has to create the blank record. Now in order to hold the blank details, I want to create one variable. Now in order to do that, what I will do is I will duplicate this current table row data which we had created in our earlier classes. Whenever the user clicks on the particular record in the editable table, that value will be stored in this current table row data. For that purpose, we had created this variable. Let me just rename this variable that is to something like blank table row data. That's fine. Just tab out. Also, what I will do is in order to segregate the records, whether the record has been created newly or not, I will create one variable over here that is in the types I will click on this plus add field here let me name this as is new click on create so this we are going to populate whether the record is new or not so this variable data will be used whenever we are updating our data back to the backend application that is business object or database so whatever is the new we will use one type of rest api to update the records and if it is an update we can use the patch so for that purpose it will be used let's now go back to our action chain First action I want is the assign variable. So what I'm trying to assign over here is the ID. Whenever the user clicks on this plus add button, here if you see ID will be generated automatically. So it will be the count of that is maximum value of ID plus one. So in order to achieve that, what I will do is I want the variable over here that is ID and it should be coming from our blank row data ID that is this one. Now what I'm trying to assign over here is the maximum value of the id which is available over here in our adp variable so let me just drag this over here that is the data and i will make use of one function that is the javascript function that is math of max so let me just use it over here math dot max so let me just consider this array dot data and i will write one function over here object that is by using the map object i want object dot id i want plus one so this will return me the maximum value of id which is available over here in the adp data using this function click on save so this was the first thing we need to do next is we have to drop one more assign variable over here if you remember we had created one field in the blank or in the employee type that is is new so i'm telling that this is a new data which i'm trying to create so i will mark this as y next once we have created our blank data we have to update our adp so this editable table is based on the adp if we update our adp this value will be reflected now let me just drag and drop the fire data event over here that is this one drop it over here that is the mutate is fine here i have to select the adp so it's not coming by default now i will just drag and drop it over here the adp here in the data what i will do is i will tell i want to map this blank table row data coming to the key in our case key is the id so i will drop the id over here done click on save so once we have updated the ADP variable, we want to reset the blank table row data because when the user clicks on next plus button, so this blank table row data shouldn't hold any new value. So for that purpose, what I will do is I will drop the reset action. Even if you don't drop, it won't affect because this blank row data table, we are using only for updating the records. 
and this variable that is id will be overwritten whenever the user clicks on plus button to be on the safer side i will reset this variable drag and drop it over here in this i will tell to reset this blank table row data that is this one done now let me just go back to the page designer currently we are having 173 id over here if the user clicks on plus if you see our record will be created with the id that is the maximum id value whichever was present in our editable table plus one 174 and the user he or she can be able to update the details like this what i am doing just about so when the user clicks on save it will be saved so the save is based on some event if you click on this and go to the event here we are having the details how to update to the backend now currently we are having only the patch operation that is to update the events Similarly, if you want to create a new employee in the business object, we have to use the post API instead of patch. So patch will be used only for updating the records in the employee business object. So in this class, we had demonstrated how to create a new record when the user clicks on the add button in the editable table if it is using the array data provider variable. Here is the bonus tip for our students. I'm here in the save button action chain. Now, first of all, in the action chain, what we have to do is this is our previous step that is to update the employee records with the help of patch operation. Now, if I click on this if variable or the if condition over here, this was the previous condition which we were using. Just append and see whether this is a new record. This is the new variable or the field which we had created in the employee type. So this with the help of this, we are checking whether this is a new record or not. If it is a new record, we will be going for this second if condition. Here we will check only if it is new. So if it is new, what we will do is we are going to make use of this post create employee rest API for business object. And in the body, what we are doing is we are just fetching the ADP value, which is for that particular index. If you see over here, I have made use of the function. This function is nothing but it is used just to remove the is new field, which we had created in the employee tab. Suppose if we send the current payload, which is having the is new variable or the field and which is not present in our employee business object, you are call will be failed saying is new variable is not expected in the payload so in order to avoid the error what we are doing is we are just removing the is new variable on the field or the property in the json payload and we are just returning back the payload as is now that is what we are mapping over here and same thing we have to modify over here as well in the patch operation as well because is new variable or the field we have added in the type field so it will reflect our, across all the places wherever we are making the variable based on that particular type. Here also same thing, we are removing just is new field from that payload and then we are mapping as is.